inventions our finalists created for season one of America's Greatest Makers were truly awesome. We had Team Brush with their high-tech toothbrush, Team Aseo with their workout monitoring gloves, Team Newton with their sports impact sensor, Team Power Bobber with their electronic fishing floater, and Team Hands-On with their gloves that enable the deaf to speak. For season two, we're giving contestants even more tech to choose from, with the chance to build on not one, but three Intel platforms. As seen on season one, the Intel Curie Compute module is ideal for your smaller form factor, smart, connected, or wearable product ideas. Then we've added the next generation Intel Atom processor, whose enhanced power and ability to do remote monitoring using the cloud is perfect for IoT and 4K video, as well as powering your robots, drones, smart home devices, and more. And finally, there's the Intel RealSense ZR300 camera. It has 3D vision, so your robot will better see the relation between the environment, people, and objects. With tech like this at your fingertips, think of what you could make, or how much better you could make it. Well, buongiorno. So, uh, unfortunately, I'll have to speak in English today, since my Italian is not really up for, for uh, uh, this such a large audience. So I, I, uh, the, the video that we just saw was about a television show that we produced in America called America's Greatest Makers. And the point that behind this for Intel was we wanted to be able to really shine a light on the innovation that is occurring within the maker movement and highlight what can actually be done. And so I would like to share both as a, if some of the lessons from that as, as the executive producer but also the lessons as a technologist on where the, f the future of maker technology would go, and as, as the general manager of the maker and innovator group on some of the things that we're working on and how, what you can kind of expect to see. So I think the, the, the first piece that really comes in, in, in to play is the idea that, well, are we running out of technology or, or is, is the technology reaching a limit? And I think the, the thing that's, that was most interesting to me from the television show and from working with other people, and if you go on to the, to the fairgrounds here and look at all of the different ideas, is, is that the, it's the technology that we have, uh, it still has a long way to run. That there are multiple people with ima amazing imaginations that are figuring out how to take these technologies and, and do new things with them. And I think that, the, that that sense of imagination is really going to be critical moving forward. And so the, the, the societies that have great imaginations and that who can envision new things are going to be able to create new ideas and new businesses and new growth. So imagination, you know, and obviously Italy has got is a, a very rich culture of, of imagination and a rich culture of innovation. So I think you're well positioned from that perspective. So to do so, one of the key lessons is actually making this technology more accessible to people. And what we find is, is that different people in different regions and, uh, will have different problems and different ideas. There were uh, much older uh, contestants in the television show who were from rural Oregon and who used the technology to be able to, to manage cattle herds. It's something that uh, in the middle of Rome you're not going to be thinking that much about, but it's actually a very big industry and it's very important. And they were much older, but they had a, a clear vision of some of the things that they needed to do. They had problems they wanted to solve. And, and so I think when you look at, at where we need to go and what the new technology is, a lot of it has to do with increasing that access, making it more accessible to women, making it more accessible to people around the world. I was very excited to see all the makers from all over Europe and even um, the Middle East who were on, on stage uh, earlier today, and the youth that they can actually go off and, and, and do new technology. So I think there's a lot of new technology that's available from the people when you look, walk around here. Uh, I think the, the other piece is that companies like, like Intel, and I think uh, uh, Massimo was, it has a, a lot to do with this as well, is we keep looking at how do we make the technology easier to use. And sometimes when we, as engineers, we envision something, it becomes much more complicated than it should be but we're continuing to work and figuring out how do we make it easier to use, how do we make it easier for people to learn, how do we make it e easier for people to share. And as we, as we do continually improve these sorts of things, we'll, we'll, you'll start seeing more technology because you'll have more people who are able to, to, even if they have the idea, now they can actually make it real. 
And, uh, and that's always a, a challenge to, to, uh, to, to figure out how you can go from an idea to reality. It's not just enough to have a great idea, you have to have a path. So often what we're also seeing is, is that people are, um, get to a point where they were able to come up with a great prototype. And when they prototype something, then they want to go off and start to sell it as a product. And, and that's very important for the economies uh, around the world where we got to figure out how we can actually solve the local problems, how people can actually create new businesses, how do we create new jobs. And I think there's a lot of work that, that's going on by Intel and by others in terms of how do we actually make it easier to go from that prototype idea into a product idea. Uh, I, you know, I, I liked the, uh, the presentation earlier on, I, on the Fab Labs about the whole modularity aspect. And what you'll see is that in one of the, one of the ways in which we're looking at this is making the difficult things easy by modularizing some of the technology. And by making it open source and, and modular technology, uh, the, the people can actually focus on the problems that they want to solve, not the problems that have been solved many times before. So I think that you will be seeing that things are, the existing technology is going to be getting better uh, because of the people, because of uh, work that's being done in my company and other companies, but mostly because of all the new people that are going to be playing with it. But the existing technology will only take us so far. And so the question is, is that, okay, how, one of the things that we, we had with uh, the, con the, the contestants for the television was often they wanted video. They want to be able to do, use a lot of video. They want to be able to, to, to use more senses, more of their senses, their hearing, their video, the, the, their sight, or maybe their smell. And, and so we, we need to be able to create new technology that we can do these sorts of things. And the good news is that we've actually started going down that path. And what you'll see is that in, uh, at IDF in, in August, we introduced the Joule technology, which again is a modular technology which allows people to go off and create all kinds of different things. But now we have a huge amount of processing power that we're bringing to the edge. It's very small, low power, lightweight, and very easily configurable. So that people can do a, a wide variety of different things. And, and with that, we include a, a uh, we're bringing a lot of other base technologies such as a 3D cameras. So we, you saw the, the real sense cameras that we talk about, which is 3D cameras. How do we actually integrate those very easily? Make sure that the software works uh, easily so that people can actually come up with their own, own ideas and implement them very well. So as you start creating these new technologies, these new capabilities, and you start interacting and, and um, combining them, uh, they, you can create all sorts of new pieces. In this case, it's a drone that because it has a 3D camera, uh, you don't have to worry about it hitting, it, hitting a wall or hit running into the post as if you're trying to run a drone around here. Uh, we'll also be adding more and more functionality and capabilities. The people, these, you know, if you're running a drone, you can look at, you know, can we actually go off and, and have an infrared sensor that would go off and you could see when, where a, a pump is getting too hot and you need to go off and change it. So more sensors, more capability, more, th more, more options. And these new opportunities are, are fascinating to me because they're not just in the traditional sorts of aspects. There's a company called Thunrum Thud Rumble, which has completely reinvented their mixers for uh, using turntables. And, and what, what you're seeing is almost the, the invention of a new art form, where they're, they're taking the turntable, they're using some of the electronics to be able to to change the way in which they're combining the sounds and how people are interacting with the, with the device. So it's, it's, kind of, it's an exciting time for, for, to watch these people who are creating an entirely new ecosystem, an entirely new way of, of interacting with their art form and doing something new and different. This is, this is just one, one piece. Again, this goes back to the imagination. They have a tremendous imagination. They have a tremendous vision of where they want to go. And, they're able to, and because the technology has gotten better, they're able to go off and do these sorts of things. So I think, uh, in closing, I'm just trying to keep this relatively short. I think there's a, there's a, the technology that we have has a huge amount of running room. We have new technology where we're creating a lot more capability for people who need that capability. And really, the, the, what I'm most concerned with is do we have the imagination to solve real problems and to solve the problems that are local? And do we have the, are we engaging enough of our population so that people are thinking about creating and have the initiative to go off and create something new and do to something different. So the, it's really, do we have the imagination to create the future? And what I hope to see here is that in many ways, uh, uh, just walking around the uh, 
Maker Faire, you can see there is a lot of imagination where we can create the future. Thank you. Grazie. 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 Grazie.